you will remember from the beginning of this section of the course that I discussed that volume conduction presents a potential confound for connectivity analyses of electrophysiology data, particularly for EEG, but that's also the case for MEG and also the case for LFP. Now, in general, there are two families of strategies for dealing with volume conduction issues. One family of strategy involves spatial filtering, and another, so this is something that you do to your data. It's an operation that you apply to the data before you do your connectivity analyses. And another family of strategies is applying some lagged connectivity measure or lagged synchronization based measure. Now, this stuff I'm going to talk about, these lagged connectivity measures, I will talk about more in later videos. In this video, I'm going to talk about spatial filtering. There are several different kinds of spatial filters that are appropriate for use in EEG data and connectivity analyses. For example, there is dipole fitting, that's a spatial filter. There are eigen decomposition based filters, independent components analysis based spatial filters, beamforming, min norm estimation, all sorts of spatial filters. Here, I'm going to focus exclusively on one kind of spatial filter, and that is the surface Laplacian. So that's going to be the main point of this video to introduce you to the surface Laplacian, how it works and why it's useful for interpreting electro level connectivity. Now the surface Laplacian is, in my opinion, the best spatial filter that you can apply for connectivity analyses. That's not the same as saying it's the best spatial filter period with electrophysiology data. There are many different kinds of spatial filters. Different spatial filters have different optimization criteria and they're useful in different situations. But I think if you are doing electrode level synchronization analyses, then the surface Laplacian is a great spatial filter. So let me first start with the idea behind the Laplacian. So here we have a voltage map and essentially this is showing uh, electrodes, a couple of electrodes here and one deep source in the brain whose electrical fields are projecting to every single electrode. And this I've discussed before, this image I've shown before. And the idea is that this situation is problematic for connectivity analyses because the synchronization that you can measure between these two electrodes is artificial, it's spurious, it's really coming from or reflecting the fact that these two electrodes are measuring the same source. So that is a problem. Wouldn't it be nice, this is the idea of the Laplacian, wouldn't it be nice if we can estimate the projections onto the electrodes that come from a single common source and remove those from the data, remove this feature from the data, filter it out of the signal. And then if we could do that, that would mean that each electrode is no longer sensitive to these deep sources that are projecting everywhere. Instead, each electrode is mainly sensitive to the activity, the neural activity directly underlying or coming from tissue directly underneath that electrode. So this is the idea of the surface Laplacian. So how does that translate into a spatial filter? Well, the idea of translating this concept into a operationalization is we think about what the spatial characteristics of this situation look like versus the spatial characteristics of this situation. So here, all electrodes measure very similar patterns of activity, so very similar amplitude values. So there's a really, really strong autocorrelation over long distances in this case. And that means that the spatial frequencies uh, or the, the energy and the topographies are dominated by low spatial frequencies. So we have strong correlations across large regions of space. Now here in this situation, we do not have large correlations over uh, long regions of space, long range spatial correlations. Instead, we have a lot of local correlations. We have, there's a lot of local differentiation. So this electrode is likely to look a lot different from this electrode. Well, you know, I mean, the, the, the electrodes look the same, of course, physically, but I mean, the activity at this electrode is going to look different from the activity at this electrode. So that's the idea of the of how the Laplacian filter works. Essentially, we are saying that 
uh, low spatial frequencies get removed from the data, high spatial frequencies, where there's a lot of things changing very quickly over space, those are preserved in the data. Okay, so that's a bit of the idea, that's a bit of the theory. Here you see an example of real data. These both come, the, both of these maps come from the same time point, the same map. This is showing the original voltage map, and this shows the Laplacian map. So this is actually just a spatially filtered version of exactly these data. Now, on first glance, they might look like they are really different. But if you look around for a moment, you will see that there's a lot of subtle features that you can that are obvious here in this map that are difficult, but eventually you can find them in this map. So maybe the most obvious one is this sort of reddish blob up here. This is pretty relatively spatially constrained, and you also see that feature here. And then we can see there's this bright blue blob here that's mainly driven by this one electrode. And that feature you also see in the data over here. It's a little bit harder to see, but it's also visible. And then again, you know, you can go through, if you like, you can pause the video and go back and forth through these different features. The idea is that all of these local features are present in this map as well, but they are obscured by this really large low frequency, large amplitude, low frequency topography. It's actually a little bit conceptually similar to getting rid of the one over F in the power spectrum by baseline normalization. So there, the idea was that higher frequencies have a lot of local dynamics, but those small scale dynamics that are probably the things you're interested in, the task related dynamics, are overshadowed by this really large, powerful 1 over F. So by normalizing out the 1 over F, we can focus in on the local features a little bit better. Now, this is that analogy isn't perfect here because the Laplacian is, is not actually a normalization. We're not dividing by anything. We're just applying a spatial filter. But here we have large, low-frequency topographical features, and we filter them out, and that allows us to focus more on the local features. So now you can see, you can appreciate why the Laplacian is useful for electrode-level connectivity analyses. You can already imagine that correlating this channel, or computing synchronization between, let's say, uh, this channel and this channel, here, those two channels are going to be really strongly synchronized because they are both measuring the same deep source that is affecting, you know, basically the entire map. But then we look over here and you see these same two electrodes here and here, they no longer look like they would be so strongly synchronized. They are more differentiated because they are measuring more local activity and not these really large scale spatial features. All right, so this shows one example of the effect of the Laplacian on some data. And here's another diagram that illustrates how the spatial, uh, how the Laplacian acts as a spatial filter. So what you're looking at here on the x-axis is the spatial frequency. So lower numbers here to the left of the plot would indicate large, cor strongly correlated spatial features over the entire map, something like this and more towards the center or higher up would be higher spatial frequencies, which means more localized activity. So activity that's less strongly correlated with uh, or across neighboring electrodes. Now, what I actually did in this simulated data, these are simulated data, is take a feature that looks like this. So it's a big Gaussian at the back of the head and then two small Gaussians. And this is, you know, kind of supposed to be simulating some parietal, central parietal activation and this would be some uh, bilateral motor activation. And then what I did was make this uh, parietal feature both larger, so lower frequencies, larger on the topography, and also higher amplitude. And these are smaller frequencies and also lower amplitude. And then I actually added them up. It's impossible to see, but this map is also present inside this map. But this map is so strongly dominated by this one low, spatial frequency structure that it overpowers this smaller local activity. And then you apply the Laplacian and that gets rid of this low spatial frequency feature. It's attenuating this low spatial frequency feature. And then that preserves the more high spatial frequency structure in the data.
So how does the surface Laplacian actually work? Well, it's basically just computing the second spatial derivative. Now, if the head were a totally flat plane, which I don't know, my head isn't, I'm guessing that your head is not a flat plane, then computing the Laplacian would actually be super simple. You would literally just compute the second spatial derivative, and that gives you the Laplacian. With the head modeled as a sphere, so as a round three-dimensional surface, the math gets a little bit trickier, and I'm not going to go into it too much, although you can check it out in the MATLAB code. But essentially, we are just computing the second spatial derivative on the sphere. Okay, but my main goal for this video was to introduce you to the idea of the Laplacian, which is this. So here's the idea of the Laplacian, and illustrate an example of what the data look like before and after applying the Laplacian transform, and convince you that this is a good spatial filtering, a pre-processing technique, if you want to apply electrode level synchronization analyses.